I am Bill Stack, author of books, videos, and articles about home flight simulation. This video, using air traffic control for visual flight rules in Microsoft Flight Simulator, is deliberately designed and constructed for self-learning. Using air traffic control in your simulator will help you increase the realism of your simulations. Principles and methods can be applied to other home flight simulation programs. This video explains the use of air traffic control for simulating civilian general aviation and limited commercial aviation. It regards single player simulations. It is only for home flight simulation and should not be applied to real world aviation. Before we proceed, I remind you that my works are copyrighted. Copying or distributing any part of my videos without my consent undermines my ability to produce those videos and to earn my living. That is why copyright infringement is against the law. I appreciate your honoring my copyright by not copying and distributing my videos. Air traffic control is a service operated by an appropriate authority to promote the safe, orderly, and expeditious flow of air traffic. It prevents collisions by maintaining separation among aircraft in the air and on the ground. It also provides weather reports and pilot advisories. In furtherance of these objectives, pilots must communicate with ATC and follow its instructions and clearances. At airports, pilots interact with ground control, the tower, common traffic advisories, and departure and approach. In the air, pilots interact with towers, departure, approach, and air route traffic control centers. Different types of services are provided for aircraft flying visual flight rules and instrument flight rules. Most communications received from air traffic control are clearances or approvals. An aircraft requests clearance to do something, and air traffic control clears the aircraft to do it. The aircraft does so only after receiving the clearance from ATC. Some ATC communications are instructions. Air traffic control instructs the aircraft to do something, such as taxi to a runway or land on a runway. The aircraft follows the ATC instructions or requests clearance for alternate procedures. Some ATC communications are readbacks. ATC clears or instructs the aircraft, then the pilot repeats the communication to ensure accuracy. Frequencies for these communications are shown on aviation charts, on the map feature of Microsoft Flight Simulator, and in the ATC window itself. Microsoft Flight Simulator enables the following ATC services. Clearing aircraft to taxi, take off, and land to avoid other aircraft. Vectoring aircraft around artificial intelligence aircraft in the area to maintain separation. It provides these services on airport grounds, in airport airspaces, and in the en route airspaces between and above departure and destination airports. It also provides weather reports through the usual automated methods. In Microsoft Flight Simulator, air traffic control is available everywhere, even over oceans and remote areas. Air traffic control in Microsoft Flight Simulator is driven by text menus. Our audio communications are simulated for us in text and audio form. Communication frequencies have two decimal places instead of the usual three. We are allowed to simulate flight anywhere in our simulator without air traffic control, which would cost real pilots their licenses. We cannot declare emergencies in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Microsoft Flight Simulator does not simulate special VFR or VFR on top services. Check the simulator's settings to be sure your air traffic control will work as needed. From the simulator's main menu, click on Settings. Or from the simulator window, click the Options menu, then click Settings and General. From the Settings screen, click on General. On the General Settings menu, make sure the three options in the upper right are checked. Then check the pilot voice of your choice. To use air traffic control in Microsoft Flight Simulator, the ATC window must be open. Click on Views, then Air Traffic Control, or press the tilde backtick key on your keyboard. When ATC has a message for you, it opens the window for you. 
If the ATC window blocks your view, you can close it by mouse clicking on the X box in the upper right or by pressing the tilde back tick key. You can also use your mouse to move the window and to make it smaller. For Microsoft's air traffic control to clear your VFR flight to take off or land, conditions at your departure and destination airports must enable visual flight. If your view is obstructed by clouds, rain, snow, or haze, you will not be cleared to fly VFR. To ensure visual flight conditions, select Clear Skies or Fair Weather from the Weather menu, or make your own user-defined VFR weather. Whenever an aircraft moves around a controlled airport, which is also called a towered airport, the pilot must receive clearance to do so. When the aircraft wants to taxi to a runway, the pilot must request and receive clearance. When the aircraft wants to taxi from a runway to a gate or a parking area, the pilot must request and receive clearance. No aircraft is allowed to move around a controlled airport without proper clearance. Frequencies for the tower and ground control are shown on charts in the map feature of Microsoft Flight Simulator and in the ATC window. You can begin your ground operations at a gate, ramp, or parking area. Although we can begin our simulated flights on an active runway, that is an unrealistic simulation luxury. When you are ready, open your ATC window. The ATC window displays the options available for your airport. Enter the relevant frequency into the COM1 radio, or mouse click on the option, or press the respective number on your keyboard. Microsoft Flight Simulator will tune your communication radio to the appropriate frequency. You will benefit from listening first to the automated weather reports that are available at your airport. The Automated Terminal Information Service, abbreviated ATIS, reports weather conditions at busy airports and provides information about the currently active runways for VFR and IFR flights. The Automated Surface Observation System, abbreviated ASOS, broadcasts continuously updated automated weather briefings. The Automated Weather Observation System is a continuously updated automated airport weather briefing system used at some United States airports. After listening to the weather report, select Ground Control or the Tower, whichever applies. The ATC window displays the available ground control options. Option 1 enables us to hear ATIS. Option 2 tells ATC that you want to remain in the traffic pattern for a go-around. Options 3 through 7 tell ATC that you will depart the airport and go somewhere else. Option 8 tells ATC that you will taxi to another location on the airport grounds. We will select North for our demonstration. Ground control gives us directions for taxiing to the active runway. We follow the signs for that route to the runway. If we are unfamiliar with the airport, we can activate progressive taxi. In the real world, ground control would instruct the pilot via radio as the aircraft proceeds along the taxi route, if requested by the pilot. In Microsoft Flight Simulator, progressive taxi is a series of yellow arrows on the pavement. Use the ATC window to contact the tower, then request takeoff clearance. You will be cleared to take off when safe separation is assured. If ATC says hold short, stay where you are and wait for clearance to take off. If ATC says taxi into position and hold, taxi onto the runway, align with the center line, and wait for clearance to take off. After you receive takeoff clearance, acknowledge receiving it, then take off immediately. At uncontrolled airports, which are also called non-towered airports, pilots use the common traffic advisory frequency and sometimes Unicom to announce their intentions to move around the airport. There are no ATC requests or clearances at uncontrolled airports. We still use the ATC window in Microsoft Flight Simulator to communicate at uncontrolled airports. After you have opened your ATC window, Tune the common frequency at your airport. Announce your intention to taxi to a runway. Then taxi to that runway. Then listen to radio traffic. Then announce your intention to take off as soon as you are ready. Then take off immediately. 
As you depart a controlled airport, the tower will hand you off to the next air traffic control jurisdiction. Change frequencies to the handoff and contact the next ATC jurisdiction. If there is no further ATC jurisdiction, the tower will tell you to resume your own navigation. This is because ATC does not provide en route vectoring for visual aircraft. As you depart an uncontrolled airport, there is no further need for common traffic communications. You may request flight following any time during your VFR flight. Flight following is an en route VFR service that tells VFR pilots where they are at a given moment. It provides no vectoring. Its use is optional. Using flight following can make long VFR flights more interesting. When you acknowledge the squawk code received from air traffic control, Microsoft Flight Simulator automatically enters that code into your transponder. You can enter the squawk code yourself into the transponder, but you must be quick. ATC will request acknowledgement after just a few seconds. When air traffic control receives your squawk code, information about your aircraft appears on their radar screens. ATC uses that information to tell you your current position. Acknowledge ATC radar contact with your aircraft. You will hear and see radio traffic between ATC and other aircraft. If ATC does not call you specifically, such as Cessna AFM, the message is not for you. The text will appear in colors different from your communications. These messages will be useful for knowing about the air traffic around you, but pay more attention to your flight than to the radio traffic. The ATC window will automatically appear when ATC calls you. Respond to ATC whenever you are contacted. Communication with air traffic control is required when passing through airspaces of controlled airports. Whenever we pass through a controlled airport's airspace, we must receive clearance from the tower to pass through its airspace. Look at your chart or the map or your GPS screen to know when you are near a controlled airport's airspace. Permission to pass through an airport's airspace does not apply when you fly above that airspace. Open the ATC window and tune the airport's tower. Request and receive clearance from the tower to transit the airport's airspace. Acknowledge the tower's clearance to transit its airspace. As you leave the airport's airspace, contact that airport's tower and report that you are clear of its airspace. You may resume flight following if you desire. Use the same procedure that you used when you previously requested flight following. When you are near your destination airport, Tune the weather report, if available, and listen to it. After you have opened the ATC window, select Nearest Airport. Select your destination airport from the list. If it is not in the list, select Airports Farther From You. If it still is not in the list, wait until you are closer to the airport. When your airport appears in the list, click on that line or press that number on your keyboard. If your destination airport has an automated weather report service, select it and listen to the report. Then contact the tower. If the airport has no automated weather report, contact the tower directly. After you have tuned the tower, select Full Stop Landing from the list of options. Listen to the tower's entry instructions and then acknowledge those instructions. If you are unfamiliar with the area, you may request directions to the airport. Air traffic control will read your transponder signal and tell you the direction and distance to the airport. After you have landed at a controlled airport, exit the runway promptly. Then contact ground control or the tower. Request clearance to taxi to a parking area, a ramp, or a gate. Acknowledge the ATC instructions, then taxi to your destination. When your destination airport is uncontrolled, select that airport from the menu, tune the common traffic frequency, and choose a runway for landing. When you are 10 nautical miles to the airport, announce your intentions over the common traffic advisory frequency, full stop landing, then announce your position. Announce your position again when you enter the airport circuit. 
then announce when you are on final approach. After you have landed at an uncontrolled airport, taxi off the runway promptly, announce your exit from the runway, and taxi to the parking area. Congratulations! You have seen how to use air traffic control for visual flight rules in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Just a little practice will give you the confidence and experience that will make it easy and natural. When you feel comfortable with using ATC for your visual flights, you will be ready to advance to using ATC for instrument flights. I have made other instructional videos for home flight simmers like you. They cover flight planning, using GPS, using autopilot, using instrument approach charts, and flight rules. I'm sure you will enjoy them. I have written and published eight books for home flight simmers like you. They cover basic maneuvers, navigation, glass cockpits, jet simming, and more. I'm sure you will enjoy them.